Dr. Ryan here. We're talking about pyoderma gangrenosum today. As always, a clinical case. Um, so what we have is a 45-year-old man with ulcerative colitis has been treated for the past five years with a monoclonal antibody against TNF-alpha, our beloved infliximab, with excellent resolution of his bowel symptoms and endoscopic evidence of normal colonic mucosa. Well done. He's otherwise healthy. He's evaluated now by a dermatologist for a lesion that was initially a pustule over his right lower extremity but has since progressed in size with ulceration. Oh dear, his ulcer is moderately painful. He does not recall any trauma to the area. On examination, the ulcer measures 15 by 7 centimeters, so quite a big bugger. <laughs> and central necrosis is present. The edges of the ulcer are violaceous. Now, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Is it A, erythematodosum, B, metastatic Crohn's disease, C, psoriasis, D, pyoderma gangrenosum, or is it E, pyoderma vegetans? So, guys, what really is pyoderma gangrenosum? It is simply a disease and nobody knows what causes it. So, it's unknown etiology characterized by the key here is non-infective non-infective necrotizing ulceration. It initially begins as a nodule or a pustule and that frequently ulcerates thereafter. And this ulcer may be single or it may be multiple with a clear bluish black undermined edged. And it is this bluish black discoloration which gives us the term gangrenosum because it resembles gangrene almost. And you have a puddle and surface which is a pyoderma. So you've got the pus which speaks to pyoderma. You've got the bluish black undermined edge which speaks to gangrenosum. It is common in the legs and the shin but really can occur anywhere in the body but commonly in the legs and shin. Diagnosis is primarily clinical based on the way it looks. Biopsy is going to show you inflammatory, neutrophilic infiltrate, occasionally some vasculitis in there as well. What's the pathogenesis of pyoderma gangrenosum? Well, nobody really knows for sure, but there are a couple of postulates that there is depression of the immune system and failure of the macrophage to respond to tissue injury or to clear whatever is the obnoxious instigating agent in there. Here are some beautiful images courtesy of Shop Cases of Clinical Medicine. God bless you, Prof. Abdullah and company. So here we can see a pyoderma gangrenosum on the foot. So we can appreciate the bluish back, kind of like undermined edge here, right? Uh, pyoderma here on the foot and the leg once more. Here we can see a mixture of pus and the, the bluish black kind of uh, undermined edge uh, on the leg once more. Here we see uh, a case on the finger of pyoderma gangrenosum. So even though it occurs on the legs and shins, most commonly it doesn't occur there exclusively. What are the causes of pyoderma gangrenosum? Well, uh, front and center is inflammatory bowel disease, right? Uh, it's probably more common in ulcerative colitis than in Crohn's. And as we're going to speak about it, it speaks to the severity of disease as well. But watch out because rheumatoid arthritis can also give it to you as well as some hematological disorders, the likes of polycythemia, rubra vera, chronic granulocytic leukemia, multiple myeloma, and monoclonal tomopathy, the IgA type, uh, some rheumatological conditions, we said uh, RA, as well as GPA, previously called Wegener's granulomatosis, but the nomenclature has since changed. It is now granulomatosis with polyangiitis, granulomatosis with polyangiitis. No. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't forget infectious agents like chronic active hepatitis, and in 20% of cases, it's idiopathic. We don't really know what caused it. We just know that the pyoderma is there. An important note, guys, that 50% of patients with pyoderma gangrenosum have ulcerative colitis, and this serves, as we said, as a marker of severity of disease. Now, pyoderma may precede the onset of inflammatory bowel disease, and the important thing here is that healing actually parallels with the cure of pyoderma and collectively causes rapid healing of the skin lesion as well. What's an important differential diagnosis? So you see a lesion that looks like pyoderma gangrenosum. The differential for that can be a traumatic ulcer, <clears throat> a venous ulcer. And right, we covered, uh, uh, you know, uh, leg ulcers in a previous video. Infection. I'm mean, thinking infective ulcers with TB, pyogenic infection, leprosy, and leishmaniasis. Uh, vasculitis, nevea polyitis, nodosa, Bechet syndrome, and granulomatosis with polyangiitis, any hematological uh, condition, but mainly things like sickle cell anemia, and uh, neoplastic etiologies. So if you think that this um, lesion bears characteristics which may be sinister in the way of asymmetry or the border that's irregular or the color or the, the, the diameter which is getting bigger and bigger, 
we think, okay, fine, let's bow up seeds and see what we have. And so the differentials from a neoplastic perspective are squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, and our beloved cutaneous lymphoma. Okay, so how do you go about investigating pyoderma gangrenosa? Hmm. Hmm. Well, it's good to do a full blood count for the differential and an erythrocyte sedimentation rate. And this because, you know, leukocytosis obviously speaks to infection, right? And as well as ESR may speak to an infective or inflammatory process. The blood sugar as well, because the patient's diabetic, you know, there's some degree of immunocompromise. Biopsy from the actual lesion to ascertain what's the histology behind it and does it fit the classic histological definition of pyoderma gangrenosum. And other investigations as per your individual clinical suspicion based on the patient in front of you. If you're thinking there's IBD at play, which is inflammatory bowel disease, it's prudent to probably go and get yourself a bedium enema or a colonoscopy. For collagen vascular disease, it's other stigmata of rheumatological disease in the way of, you know, arthritis, arthralgia, early morning stiffness, Raynaud's disease, if you've got cytopenias, if you've got, you know, alopecia, you've got oral ulcers, uh, then you probably want to, you know, investigate that further with anti-nuclear factor, anti-double standard DNA, antibody, and anti-phospholipid antibody, all right, for uh, looking for, you know, you do a lupus anticoagulant, your beta-2-glycoprotein protein, and your anti-cardiolipin antibodies, searching for those anti-phospholipids, right. For vasculitis, it's good to do a P-anchor, which is perinuclear uh, anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody, and a C-anchor, which is a cytoplasmic, anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody looking for the um, small vasculitides, uh, which is microscopic polyangiitis and GPA and eosinophilic GPA, previously called Shirk's thrust disease. And if myeloma, if you think about it, you want to do a serum protein electrophoresis, maybe even a urine protein electrophoresis, uh, right, and you find the monoclonal gammopathy in there, and you want to proceed to a bone marrow to quantify your blasts. All right. So how does one treat pyoderma gangrenosum? Well, simply treat the underlying disease, whatever it is. Is it hematological? Is it rheumatological? Is it inflammatory bowel disease? Is it infective? You treat it, you address it. And then general measures are you want to control the infection, local dressings, and of course, analgesia for pain. In terms of topicals, corticosteroid is a good uh, idea. Uh, often triamcinolone may be injected into the ulcer edge. Tacrolimus as well can be used, right? In terms of systemic therapy for it, autopred is a good idea. In some patients, you want to pulse them with IV steroid in the way of methylprednisolone, um, one gram intravenously for three days, and then follow up by autoprednisolone. Uh, minocycline 100 milligrams per day may actually reduce the steroid dose. And then, of course, immunosuppressors for steroid spreading effect, cyclosporin, tacronomus, or azathioprine, anti TNF alphas may be used. And examples are infliximab, such as mapegol, antilimumab, golimumab, and etanacept. And if the above fail, you know, you opt for your monoclonal antibodies. Dapsone may be used in milder cases. Other drugs to consider colchicine, clofazamine, cyclophosphamide, and everybody's favorite, mycophenolate morphetil. Okay, guys, back to our clinical case. So we had a 45-year-old gentleman who was known with ulcerative colitis who had good endoscopic resolution with the use of infliximab. He's otherwise well, but now he has the skin lesion which started off as a pustule on his right leg and is moderately painful. It's quite large and central necrosis. The edge of the ulcer is violaceous. This looks like, smells like, dum da da dum pyoderma gangrenosum. So you know that there are a number of different skin manifestations in inflammatory bowel disease, but pyoderma gangrenosum can occur in upwards of 12% of patients with ulcerative colitis, and it's characterized by a lesion, like we said, that begins as a pustule and then progresses concentrically to involve surrounding normal skin. These lesions ulcerate with violaceous hip margins and surrounding erythema with some pus in there, typically found on the lower extremities, but it can occur anywhere, right? So everybody, I just want to encourage you from the Word of God, we're talking about self-denial. The Lord Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 16 verse 24 says, If any man would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. The natural inclination of man is to follow his own desires and to do that which seems right, that which brings pleasure. Right? But if we truly want to follow the Lord Jesus, there is a call for us to deny ourselves and to take up the cross. Now, taking up the cross speaks to crucifying the flesh man, or what we call the carnal man. Crucifying our own desires and being sensitive to the Holy Spirit in terms of what God wants us to do. To be filled with holiness in the innermost parts. And I pray that will be the desire of our hearts, even as we actively pursue the Lord more and more every day. God bless you for that. 
Uh, these are my references. Have yourself a wonderful day. I'll see you soon with another uh, interactive uh, fun video in internal medicine. God bless you. Thank you.